cool moms. This came in from an anonymous source who did not want to be named <laughs> for sending this in. We have uh, watched it separately. We haven't discussed it with each other beforehand. Let's get into it. The show hosted by Joe Gatto and Steve Byrne. And I'll read the description here. It says, comedians Joe Gatto and Steve Byrne always wanted to be the one thing they grew up. Wait, they always wanted to be one thing when they grew up, a cool mom. <laughs> Why? Throughout their lives, both had strong, opinionated mothers who gave great advice. Yeah. That's a way worse reason for the name Two Cool Moms I possibly could have came up with. <laughs> I didn't understand if they were just, uh, if they named it after a, pre if they were just coming up with a premise. Going into this, I said, hey, it's the guy from Impractical Jokers who's no mm -hmm. longer with Impractical Jokers. And it's his buddy who's also a comedian. Let's see what this is going to be. And uh, it ended up being Two Cool Moms, which I was surprised by that name myself. All right. Well, let's uh, start off with their introduction. I think I'm going to be using the word corny a couple times today, so let me just get that out of the way right now. We're back. <laughs> well, where were we, really? Hey, everybody, it's Joe Gatter from Two Cool Moms. I'm here with my friend. Make a wish and hope it comes true. <laughs> I'm here. Yes, you're here. I'm on the set of Two Cool Moms. That's... I was just wishing I was here. And, and you're I here. Just... Joe. <laughs> Steve. Joe, it's good to... <laughs> Joe, we you're did here. It. We did it. It's so good to see you. Hey, guys. Uh, look, we're all here. You're hey, here. You're here. Uh, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is fucking cool. <laughs> everything on this show, everything they say is a jumping off point. I thought if Robin Williams were still alive and cloned and both Robin Williams co-hosted a show together, oh, yeah. that's what this would be. It'd be a ham fest. Yes. That's what this is. And they have the stupid, you know, we're dads, we're dumb guy trope jokes they do. Uh, there was, you know, an earthquake or a disaster or something. You'd have to be in charge and do this. How much would your significant other <laughs> trust that you knew what you were doing and or follow you? Someone's dying. <laughs> Maybe one or two. Most likely me. Would you just say, Jess, get us out of this and just hold on? I'll like, carry the kids. It'd be the opposite. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Jess would be the one and be like... Okay, this is what we're doing. And I'm like, okay, guys, just just <laughs> listen, listen to mom. mom. We prepared for this. And I'll carry. I'll be a burrow. Yeah. I'm the donkey. I'll hold stuff, and you all get out. I would just be. Yeah. I would just be dropping dogs in a backpack. I'd be, I'd oh my be, god, I'd where's your U-Haul? I'd have to be hoofing it with like all these pups. Get it? They're helpless without their wives. Surprise! <laughs> not sitcom writers. That this kind is of the joke. banter portion. The banter portion of the show. Yes. Which uh, I actually didn't think was. That terrible. It reminded me of uh, this other show I listened to, WATS. How dare there. you? How dare you, sir? Those are <laughs> fighting I words. Their, <laughs> I will I see you next beef. month, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to forget. <laughs> I'm not going to forget this. <laughs> I found there to be huge, big laughs in this song, in this show. Excuse me. If you check out my clip, too, big okay. laughs. All right. How much did you lose when you did that? You had to have big weight swing. Uh, I was do you know? down to 165. American? Oh, sorry? American? <laughs> pounds or kilos? What are we talking? Definitely pounds, yeah. Wow. I, I, I got gaunt. I looked yeah. like Christian Bale in the machine. Oh, did you? It was like, it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. It was now like, you look it, like Burt Kreischer in the machine. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> wow, that was a good one. Was it? Because he's big and fat in that. I think yeah. we've got our social clip. <laughs> that, was funny. That, that one's perfect for the socials. Yeah, it's crazy because... The person who sent this to me sent me to their Instagram page, and this was the pinned clip oh. on there. So they did end up using this for their social media. The first thing I saw, I went, oh, these guys suck. Yeah. Oh. They're so excited about themselves. Actually, I, I grabbed another video I found on their Instagram because this is a new set they have now. I think they went away for a while, and now they've come back. And uh, this is from their old set, and this is on their Instagram page. It's a Target. Walk by, saw this on the rack. I said, "What better? <laughs> two cool moms." Problem is, there's two cool moms. So he's wearing a shirt that says, "I'm a cool mom." Yeah. And now he just walked in and handed his buddy another one of those. Oh my god! <laughs> Shoot up! It's time for two cool moms. <laughs> now we're two cool moms. Can't just have one cool mom. Yeah. yeah. So they're leaning into this corniness and shit, but it doesn't make it okay. No. I'm not giving them a pass just because they know they suck. 
And I found their comedy to be kind of tepid, mundane, <laughs> almost safe comedy. At first, I thought this was an all-family show, maybe. But then at some points, you get some swearing, and so I was kind of surprised by that. But uh, the actual show itself is it's a, it's an Ask Us Anything show. It's these two comedians, and they say, hey, we want you, the listener, to ask us your deepest, darkest questions. And and then we'll answer them, which I, I, I guess that's okay, but I, I don't believe some of these questions. Here's clip three. My clip three, I think it's a very dumb question to ask a millionaire. It's coming to us from Alexa. Mm. Hola. Hola to my favorite mamacitas. Oh, I'm not nice. Spanish, but I just thought it was fun. Okay. Anyways, Love I have that. two questions. First, if you both separately won the lottery, what would you do with it? Second, what's one tangible thing you cannot go one day without? Now, if anybody's watching the show, they know that Joe Gatto is from Impractical Jokers. He's raked in millions from that show. I'm sure he's not with them now, but I'm sure he's getting residuals. This guy's got a net worth online of seven million. You don't go, hey, hey, Mr. Guy, uh, how, what would you do if you were even richer? I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, and so he goes, well, you mean like a, a lot, a lot of money, like two million, two hundred million, or something like that? Because yeah, he's got to think about something that's obviously. He could get somebody he wouldn't be able to get. And does he have an answer for this? You want to talk about safe comedy. I'm not sure about that. Fuck that. That's lame. Okay, what's yours? No, right. I, I should mention Joe's answer is he wants to have a robot. That's right. A All robot right. like from Rocky Four. Right. He wants a robot. So Steve <laughs> says that's lame. And now Steve's got a better idea. Yours. You ready? Go ahead. Are you ready? I'd buy the Batmobile. Okay. That's I'd good. absolutely buy the Batmobile, and I would go everywhere. Would you drive in it? Everywhere in really? the Batmobile, okay. 100%. And, and actually, it might be a coin flip between the DeLorean or a Batmobile. The DeLorean's tight, tough for you. A lot of in and out. Low. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful. got to be careful with that. Batmobile. Batmobile's cool than a DeLorean, I think. As far as if you're doing, if you're doing like straight up. Kichi, like like the Batmobile is like a state. I'm like going boom. 60s Batmobile. Of course, no, you got to go open top. You know, with the with yeah, the, uh, the red globe. Oh my god! Yeah, you got the fucking the fence, the caution thing falling. That's the one you. Dude, that's how the one cool you want. it! I mean, that's the For coolest sure. car. Now I ask you, Brandon, is that the coolest car? The Monkey Mobile is the coolest car on the planet. Everybody knows that. The Batmobile is pretty cool too, I guess. But that's not what I would do if I would win uh, the lottery. I wouldn't go out and buy a replica. Or anything like that. These questions are ridiculous, Carl. I don't find them to be real. I think that there is a producer who is mm -hmm. putting questions into a hat and then they reach in. My, my clip four is the perfect example. Play this and tell me if this kid actually did this. <laughs> it's coming to us from Julian. Hey guys, I have a question for both of you. So right now I'm a junior in high school and I'm getting kind of upset at myself in my PE class. <laughs> I'm always one of the last people picked to be on someone's team and I understand why. Fake. Because yeah. I have terrible hand-eye coordination at sports. But I feel like most people in my class could be talking bad about me behind my back because I suck. <laughs> what kind of 16-year-old out there is thinking, man, I got all these troubles, man. I, got, I wish I could talk to my dad Get or somebody. Get confident, stupid. I think I'm going to call that one guy from Impractical Jokers and see if he can right. help me with this dilemma in my life. I'm so thankful that podcasting wasn't around when I was 16 years old because in the year 2000s, I could just imagine myself being like, oh, God, life is hard. I keep getting boners when I don't want to get boners. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe I should call Mark Summers or J.D. Roth. <laughs> right. And maybe... Maybe those guys can help me out with this problem. It's such a dumb premise for their show yeah, because they don't have good advice for anyone. And I totally agree with you, especially with that question. I went, there's no way there's teenagers watching the show and then writing in <laughs> for advice. And they take yeah. it real seriously, Yeah, which is nuts. This answer, this is just word salad, basically. It's just about your own truth. Yep. The whole poem is just keeping your own truth. It doesn't matter if people lie about you. It doesn't, you don't get too high on your horse. All these things. I think it's one of those things where it's like going back to what you're saying. Yeah, you know who you are. Embrace yourself. Uh, appreciate who you are. And, and those hiccups make you yep. who you are at yep. the end of the day. And it, it, it shapes your outlook on life, how you interact with people. I guarantee Julian's a hell of a lot more sympathetic for sure to anybody with a slight than uh, than uh, nine times out of ten people, you know? What? So <laughs> I, th I think just live your own truth, oh. go through it, just go, okay, they don't they don't understand. Yeah. But it's also like, I don't need to brag about it. No. I what? just keep it to myself. It just, it is what it is. <laughs> what did you just say, <laughs> what sir? What the fuck? 
<laughs> that doesn't make any sense, Rick. I think he just said, you should think about what can be unburdened by what has been, I believe is what he just said. It's funny you said word salad because that was actually my summary of this show, which is my clip one, word All salad. Right. You guys, we are in the thick of it. We really are. What, there what, has what been we... so many dilemmas being thrown our way. Uh, so many. And we've been solving problems. A tsunami of them. Uh, if you will. It's and like Moses parting the. We're 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 right in the thick that's of it. That's it. We're, we're holding it down. Yeah. As Gandalf, you shall not pass in these problems, and in the, we're all the surfboards and the tsunami of life, and that's what I've always said. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that you've well, you've always been. Con this banter oh, sucks, sorry. Brandon. I thought you told me the banter part was good. <laughs> this sucks so bad. Can I go, go back ahead. to the question about the disability? And the guy just like says all these things. I, anyone who ever mentions having your truth or knowing your truth or speaking your truth can get, go get fucked immediately. Yeah, they're they lying. That. <laughs> it's so stupid. But then he gets back to the funny. Thank goodness they figure out how to get this back to a comedy. Um, there's plenty of things I'm not good at. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, but uh, my wife will tell you. It, you know, it's <laughs> you know where to begin. <laughs> Get it? Where to end, really. Uh, I, would, I would think. Get it, Chris? I, there's a lot of stuff I'm not going to just ask my wife. Huh? She's a nagging crunt. <laughs> you know, occasionally I'll deliver a zing, and I'm embarrassed if I even smile over it. These guys yeah. cackle, especially oh, yeah. fucking they love it. Joe there. Yeah, Joe, Joe loves it. So at the beginning of the show, during the banter portion, they uh, really crack themselves up with us. So I used to, like, just park at Ross for Less. Mm hmm so I'm going to look for a parking spot at Ross for Less, and a guy. It's definitely just called Ross. <laughs> Ross for Less? I don't think it's called Ross. That's like you're including the tagline. It's just Ross. Well, Ross, you know, for less. I eat at McDonald's, but ba 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 So you're, I'm at Ross. Okay, so I was at Ross. Does so, it say for less underneath it? I think it does. I think it's a tagline, though. Ross for less. But you should just say Ross, yeah. Okay, so I'm at Ross, guys. What do you want? You're missing it, the point of the story. Is that next to da, 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 TJ Maxx? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're confusing taglines and jingles. Mm -hmm. Two very different things. The guy just starts singing shit because he says Ross for less. But it got some big laughs. And oh, that's it definitely the, uh, got some big laughs. That's the important thing. In fact, there's a big laugh in my clip six. There's some ball busting going on in this show. Check this out. 100%. Hockey's the number one for you if you have to play. Hockey's my number one. Mine's tied between bowling and volleyball. Those aren't sports. Mm -hmm. That says the man who can't play neither. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, so, yeah, I got you a couple drops uh, for your board. Okay. Uh, two of them, actually. My, my, my clip seven, if you ever need a laugh track. <laughs> There you go. And then uh, I, will come I know handy. Halloween season's coming up. It's going to be spooky. So my uh, my clip eight for Halloween. <laughs> so <excellent>. yeah. <laughs> okay. That will haunt my dreams, but <laughs> not because it's scary. But it, it's... All right. So. The one thing that these guys have to do is they have to act like everything the other person's talking about is exciting. Mm -hmm. And so what you're going to hear in this next clip is a guy making something up that doesn't make any sense to make it seem like he's excited about the co topic. And also a callback. I, I was with my son recently at Lids. And I, go ape shit. I go apeshit at Lids. Lids for more. <laughs> we're at Lids. They are. They're expensive. I love Lids. And... I go ape shit at lids, he said. Mm -hmm. I would have stopped the show right then and be like, what do you mean you go ape shit at lids? I, uh, I buy a lot of hats. You buy a hat or two? Wow. <laughs> Going ape shit over there at that lid store. Good stuff, guys. But I feel like they just feel the need to keep it silly and, and wacky when, God, I wish they would start. So I decided to check out Joe's stand-up because I was curious. Like, this guy is not funny in any single way. It's just a cornball. And uh, apparently he's got a new special. It's coming out next week. And so he's got a trailer for it. I thought we could watch some of it. Probably his best jokes are in the trailer, right? Yeah, absolutely. I don't even know why I'm like this, to be honest. I can't blame drugs. I've never even tried marijuana. Technically, it's a vegetable. Not for me. I did spark up a cannoli backstage, though, before I came out. 
puff puff pastry. All right. That's why. And I don't oh. know. Uh, <laughs> Ow. I know. And the the response from the crowd, they should sweeten it. It sounds terrible. It sounds like no one's enjoying this. Yeah. They forgot to weird. do that thing. Yeah. Maybe they'll do it in post. This looks like Sebastian is, in 20 years. Yes. And I'm glad you picked up on that because it's very much the... Everything that Joe Matarese wishes he was. Right. With the uh, Italian jokes. There's more. All my dogs are named after Italian pasta dishes and desserts. That's what makes sense for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got cannoli, biscotti, spumoni, tartufo, tiramisu. Yeah. Linguini, ravioli, the brother and sister oh, fettuccine oh, oh, oh. Alfredo. <laughs> that's going that Star Wars. Imagine thinking that's a joke. This is garbage. <laughs> yeah. He's just naming foods. And people are like, come on. <laughs> it's too much, Joe. Again, very safe, very tepid, and, and just, I think, family comedy. I think he wants to go the Gaffigan route. What about Steve's stand-up, you ask? I've got that for you as well. <laughs> Steve has a special that's out. Just came out last month. And this is bonkers. He's got a live band. He's got a three-piece on the set with him. He's got like an announcer guy. So he's treating this like he's hosting a late night show. Mm -hmm. And it's literally monologue jokes. Like wherever Jay Leno's staff went when he went away from the Tonight Show, I think they write for Steve Byrne. Because that's what it sounds like to me. Uh, as you guys know, California, very, very progressive, very progressive state. And sometimes you get away with things due to the progressive nature of Los Angeles, for example, or, or California in general. I was driving along Sunset. A cop pulled me over. He said, sir, why did you run that red light? I said, officer, it's 2023. I don't see color. <laughs> The crowd's even reacting like it's a monologue. They're not laughing. They're applauding the joke. And the Come on. They've never heard that one before. Ah, oh, it's so bad. That's what he led with. That was his first one. What else he, let's see what else he's got. I saw a very sweet thing the other day. I was downtown Los Angeles, crowded bus around noon. I saw this really sweet moment in humanity, right? You'd only see this in California. I saw an elderly woman, elderly woman, get up from her seat on the bus, pack bus, and give it to a pregnant man. <laughs> This is crazy. I think we all can believe you were taking the bus. <laughs> I saw you on roller skates and boy shorts going like this. What does that mean? <laughs> well, Cal, as you know, downtown Los Angeles is pretty, it's like a ghost town lately. There's nobody there. The business has left. It's pretty quiet down there. I, I was down there to visit Gary. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's so quiet downtown. It is so quiet. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Well, it's, it's so quiet downtown Los Angeles. The only time you hear anything is when Guatemala scores a goal. <laughs> Jesus. I oh, wish the band would just row. start playing over him, you know? <laughs> what the fuck? This just happened. <laughs> Big guy in the front row is loving it. Oh, I know. I don't know where you find people like this. Because <laughs> he knows he's on camera. He has to love it. They must have found these people in the 70s. It's all I can figure. Right. This style of comedy is long gone. Yeah. We're past this Carson now. reference. Holy shit. It's observational comedy, but it's not funny. Uh. Oh, he's also braggadocious a little bit. Tells the story about how his dad used to put him and his brother in life vests, and they'd, they'd just go down the river, and his brother's foot got caught under some rocks or something, and so he ran up jumped back in the, the river in order to uh, save the day. <laughs> then I got to where he was and I jumped in and I kind of like started swimming towards him and got underwater and dislodged his, uh, his foot and saved my brother's life. And knowing what I know now, I should have fucking let him drop. <laughs> A hundred percent. I would not. I would never have a gray hair on my head. My forehead would be so much th smaller. I lost so much hair over your brother and nights over my over my little brother. Yeah. Oh, you rascal. Yeah, he sounds oh. like a bad dude. I see what you did there. You saved your brother's life again. Oh, come on, get out of here with that. What a hero. Oh, loser. What else you got, Brandon? Well. <clears throat> 
I didn't know why this show took a one year hiatus. I noticed that they were around for a while and mm -hmm. then they took an entire year off. I guess some people do that and they call that seasons, but this one came back onto iHeart with some dude's YouTube channel. I'm not even sure who that was. Elvis Duran, the Elvis yeah. Duran show on Z100 in New yeah. York. That's where they're. Uh, I don't understand it either, from. but it's connected to iHeart. So for some reason, yeah. they don't have their own YouTube channel. It's on Elvis so I, Duran's YouTube channel. Yeah. So I went back to their first episode after their hiatus, mm -hmm. and I said, you know what? I really want to know why they took the time off. Maybe they can explain. And, and uh, clip ten. They, this is how they kicked things off. Ah, the good so news nice. about this show mm -hmm. is that we have. Production value. Oh, look we at are, this. It's our first show back <laughs> here at iHeartRadio. Yeah. We got bubbles. bubbles. Boom, boom, boom. Party, party, party. party I also feel party. like the bubbles are just making a mess of going They're to my water. So. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> they went from nothing to absolute mayhem. Yeah, so I didn't get a clear answer as to why they took a year off, but I was able to watch them have fun with the bubble machine. My daughters love that, too. They're two and five. Right. These are not cool moms. I'm just coming around on this. I realized, you know, their listeners call them mommies, too. Oh, That's weird. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I swear. I wouldn't make that up. I don't, I'm not that deranged. I wouldn't come up with something like that if I could. All right. Well, I have uh, <clears throat> another clip on here. That I think you're going to enjoy. Valerie was the first question they read during the uh, Tell Us About Your Dilemmas segment. And Valerie's question is great. And they have a good time with it. This is coming to us from Valerie. Yeah, you know what I need advice on, so please help me. <laughs> That's it? That's it. That's coming to us yeah, from Valerie. you know what I need some help on? Please. So please help me. All right. You know, I know. what Val needs help with. All right, Val. I'm going to show you straight because most of your friends won't tell you tell you this. It's because your breath stinks. Good stuff. <laughs> That's really uh, funny. I mean, he could have come up with anything, but he yeah. came up with the, the funniest thing. It started with you're coming to us for advice. Possible. <laughs> well, right. That's that's one thing. I'm and, telling you, it's just another slip of paper from that hat that uh, some producers writing down. These questions are not. They're they're a hat that they got in lids when they were going ape shit. Ah, they going ape shit. Get the hats. <laughs> I mean, if you clip out, or if you hit my uh, my clip nine, and I don't know if you want to get here too. This is the show close, mm -hmm. but uh, they never tell you where to submit questions, and this uh, I don't I don't understand it. That's what we call some pretty cool advice from two cool moms. <laughs> yeah, I know it might not be what you want to hear, <laughs> but that's just how we play it. It's just nice and cool. Cool guys, this is what we do. Cool guys, moms. that's it. The minivan's been started. Thanks so much for listening. We appreciate you. Uh, thanks for submitting your questions. Yes. Uh, thank you for subscribing, please. Yeah, how do submitting you submit? Submitting them where? Yeah, that's submitting a good question. At least pretend there's a place you can email it or something. I do a bit on the Drew Lane show called The Boner Line, where it has uh, listener participation. The phone number is 209-66-BONER. I give that number out all the time because I just need people to, uh, you know, at least submit something. These guys are just like, man, we got so many questions lined up that we don't need none of them. But thanks anyway for them. So Principal Uncertainty says, Carl, you interrupted. Maybe he was going somewhere. The guy is a laugh riot. And uh, no, you know what? That's a good point. Because after he says your breath stinks, they get into some talk about brushing and flossing and how good it feels to get the food out of your teeth. And then he comes up with a line. I mean, I could never come up with something this witty and edgy, too. When you get a good booger. Yeah. Right? Like when you get a good, like you a get a big, hard like crust. Like Not like a crusty, like you feel all crusted up and then you get up in there and it's like pink and you're good. <laughs> Right, and you do it right on, right in the airplane. Bink. <laughs> yes, I do. I do that. Stick to the Italian dishes. <laughs> Isn't that great? He's like, he loves when he picks a big booger and wow. chucks it. Um, here's another question that comes in. What's one tangible thing you can't go without? I don't know why that's a question coming in for an advice show. But again, these guys are edgy. Watch out. Um, second, what's one tangible thing you could not go one day without? One tangible thing. I would say my 3 p.m. coffee. I got to have my 3 p.m. coffee. Really? My midday coffee is defines my day for sure. I need it. So your 3 p.m. coffee is like my lunch. Yeah. That's boring. You're boring, everybody. <laughs> Quit boring, everyone. Why would you feel the need to talk about drinking coffee? <laughs> Why would that ever enter your mind of something to talk about? On I don't the know show? why. But 
but I learned he has three cups a day and they're essential to his life. Yeah, very important stuff. And uh, Steve really likes a lunch. So now we're getting into some super interesting talk about, and I know this comes up on a lot of shows and we all love it when it happens. What's your wife's schedule? Let's talk about our wives' schedules. No, she doesn't. She works so hard all day that when it's like 8, it down, 8.30, yeah. she's like, good night. I'm like, really? You yeah. can't watch anything? She's like, I would, but I'm exhausted. She's saying, Bessie's all dogged out. Same Yeah. Done. So, Done but me, I'm like, I'll be up till 2 or 3 in the morning. Watch. What time does she get up in the morning? She's she's a morning person. I'm not. Bessie's up 5.30. 5.30? Yeah, with the dogs and stuff. Jess will get up at 6, 6.30. Yeah, 5.30, yeah, 5 6. Maybe 7. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, but I'm also been, I'm also, and you are too, but I think because of our lifestyles, we're, we're night owls. I mean, we're oh, getting, yeah. we're getting yeah. on stage at 9 p.m., mm-hmm. you know, 8 p.m., 9 p.m. No. At least Brandon got it right. <laughs> who is this for? <laughs> who is this for? <laughs> who could possibly give a fuck what time your wife goes to bed and what time she gets up and then what you guys do and. I read that as being kind of stocky, like, when she home? <laughs> yeah, when are right. you gone? Right, good point. <laughs> so the whites are out by nine, you say, huh? Okay. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Is there uh, anything else on here, Brandon, you want to uh, play before we move on? Uh, I guess I got one more clip. Uh, my clip 11, I really got into this dark humor. These guys oh, are bad boys. I wasn't ready for dark humor. Okay. Yeah. I don't think so. I got wheels. I would love... We should race. We got wheel. Oh, you want to race? I'd we, love to race Oh, you. we should race a charity. <laughs> I, 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 you can't touch me on ultimate uh, frisbee field. We'll race for people with spinal cord injury. We'll race them, and I might win. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I have a shot. I need a handicap. Oh my god! Cut that. So it part does out. get dangerous. It gets wow. dangerous at times. So. Wow! How many people wrote in who have spinal cord injuries? Oh right, zero. They don't tell you how to write in. <laughs> <laughs> Some motherfuckers. I was going to complain, but there's nowhere to complain to, unfortunately. So that's two cool moms, and uh, it's shocking to me. I don't know if this is just a YouTube show and a podcast, or if this is on the radio somehow, or what's good because they're they're on iHeart, but I guess it's probably right. just a podcast. What, yeah, what? I think so. That or they uh, they attach it to that other radio show that you had uh, told me about because it's maybe, on their yeah, feed now. Maybe Elvis Duran plays clips or something. Elvis Duran, very possible. All well, right, my takeaway was I would also remain anonymous if I recommended this. <laughs> yes. Smart. <laughs> you don't want to get the backlash from these two. Who are these pies? 